All right, guys, today we're gonna talk about a classic knife that you haven't seen on the channel. And in this video, we're gonna dig a little bit more into the Benchmade 940 and why you don't see it on this channel. Now, originally I did have a 940-2, which was the G10 handled version of this knife. And I've recently acquired the just straight up 940, the original aluminum handled version of the 940. And I will say this knife is growing on me and I, I do have to admit that I wish, had I known back then, um, I do wish I had gotten the aluminum handled version because I do think that this is probably the best version of this knife. But let's jump into it. Let's talk about why this knife actually might not be so bad after all. Now, after a long time of comparing the Spyderco Smock to the Benchmade 940, and I did originally own one so I could kind of say it with some degree of accuracy, I did want to add another 940 back into the one, because these are truly classic knives. They are worth having, if for no other reason, the heritage and kind of just background history of um, the 940 to the EDC world uh, is kind of worth it. But also too, like I said, if I'm gonna compare knives, I like to have the actual knives that I'm talking smack about because it is important to honestly like can give a fair comparison. Now, that being said, like I said, this one is a little bit used, a little bit abused. I did end up getting this one with a pretty used edge on it, but I did put it on my Wicked Edge and got it as good as I can. Obviously, there's some edge damage that I had to work out of it. Obviously, it does look a little bit worse for wear, but the nice thing is, it's very well broken in, as you guys can see. I threw a little bit of KPL on this thing, and it freaking rockets. So, yeah, this guy is pretty darn cool, and... Um, so anyways, getting back to this guy, it is a little bit used in this current condition, but honestly, I kind of like my user knives too. They're fun, and it also makes me feel less bad when I go to use and or thrash on them. However, like I said, uh, definitely when it comes down to it, I've been using this one, carrying it a little bit, and uh, you know, kind of like getting it back in hand. And I will say that, like I said, I definitely wish I would have initially picked up the aluminum handled version because of the centering and the, the weight of the centering, I should say, like uh, where it's centers is more natural with the aluminum handles and it also gives it that little bit heavier and naturally more robust feel. Of course any metal handles are going to be more rigid than things like G10 so you know when you hold it not to say you're trying to like crush the knife in your hand but it just it doesn't have that kind of flex that G10 has and if you guys know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about because obviously with 940s um, they, they're designed to be a mi minimalistic knife so with G10 the um the tang of the blade is not or the tang i should say of like the axis lock runs to this second screw or this second screw right here so it's a you know moderately deep kind of metal tang but obviously not full so it does have that lighter weight feel and it's even more pronounced with g10 and it also has that bit more flex so it's nice with the aluminum that you have that like added rigidity of the metal itself and then of course like i said the natural weighting of the metal so is it as lightweight as possible no I will say too, the other big thing that this knife definitely imbues is that it is a very lightweight knife and was a lightweight knife for its time, I guess I should say that. And I think a lot of people miss that kind of part of its heritage is that this is definitely a very Benchmade-esque thing. Even though I hate to see things like the Benchmade Narrows, this is very um, fitting of their design ethos with things like the Bug Out, the Tagged Out, the um, Narrows, where this is a very lightweight, very pocket-friendly knife. And I think that, um, especially for the time that it came out, this came out in the early 2000s, and back when this knife came out for everyday carry, its primary realistic contenders were things like the Buck 110 that were much larger, much heavier. You didn't come with a pocket clip. You really couldn't like EDC that knife. People did anyways because you had to. But with this knife, you know, this came you know, or was like a competitor to those blades. And so obviously much more pocket friendly, much more, um, you know, thin and narrow. And so I, I will say like for its time, it was uh, a really good knife. And the only unfortunate thing, kind of like I talked about with my Spyderco Smock versus the 940 comparison video, 
video. I like the smock more because unfortunately the, the core design of this hasn't changed in 20 years. So this is a, a very old school knife and therefore, you know, it doesn't have anything like a flipper tab. It doesn't have any, you know, or it still runs on washers. Though I will say this is a very good example of how washers break in because initially when you get a knife that runs on washers it'll be very stiff and it won't be as smooth but when you use it you carry it you fidget with it you can get a knife that as you can see here is absolutely like you can see i'm not shaking my hand much and this blade is just rocking back and forth obviously opens and closes with the slightest flick of the wrist so it, it is very smooth but at the same time too it does require a break-in period to get to that level of smoothness but all things considered it is a very compelling knife for those reasons however you know it does lack some updates because it is just an older school design but the biggest reason why i don't carry or regularly love um, Benchmade 940s is because they are super, super narrow. Now, luckily they address this issue with things like the bug out. And the reason why, like, I still own a bug out. I don't hate the bug out. Definitely not my favorite. And I don't EDC it too often. But the big thing that I will say that they really improved on with the bug out was that they kept it or they made it a little bit more wide. So you guys can see here, hopefully quite clearly, that with the 940, it is a very, very slow slim and slender knife whereas the the bug out which is actually thinner than the um, 940 feels more hand filling to me just because it is wider and i think that is a really big thing that they learned or benchmade learned when making the nine or from things like the 940 and griptilian is that you can make a really thin blade but if you make it a little bit wider it honestly feels Feels, feels a whole lot more hand filling. And so with the 940, it's very like pencil shaped. Whenever I think of the 940, I just think of a pencil because that's what it looks like to me. Not obviously exactly like a pencil obviously looks differently than this, but you know, very narrow, very slim, very slender. And you know, I just, I can't sometimes take the 940 seriously because of its slender nature. However, it is, it is a pretty solid knife. And I will say, while I wouldn't necessarily recommend the 940 unless you can find a good deal on one, um, if you do find a good deal on one, I would recommend the aluminum handled versions, not just because the 940 uh, with the aluminum handled version it is cheaper, but honestly, I feel like the weighting of this knife just feels right. And it is a the best iteration that I've felt. And I've honestly handled the carbon fiber ones. I owned a G10 version. Um, I've handled quite a few 940s in my time. And like I said, the, the aluminum handled one definitely feels the best. And it just subsequently happens to be the cheapest. So that's convenient as well. But I will say, I do think there are, you know, newer, better options out there. There are things like the Spider Coast smock are, in my opinion, better. Now, the trade-off with things like the smock is it is a heavier knife, undoubtedly. But at the same time, too, I almost guarantee you, unless you're some like super sense person, you know, you probably, if you threw a Spider Coast smock or a Benchmade 940 in your pocket and just walked around, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference because when a knife is in your pocket, you're not really going to be able to feel an ounce or a half ounce difference in weight. So I would say go with something like a smock unless you find a really good deal on a 940. As far as 940s go, I'm glad to have one back in my collection because like I said, I think for me, it's partly a nostalgia thing. These are very significant knives to the EDC like community without things like the 940, without things like the Sebenza, without things um, like the Emersons and such. Like we wouldn't really have a lot of the modern cool features and like EDC knives wouldn't be where they're at without these like cornerstone knives. Now the argument could be made someone else would come along and design something similar and that's probably true but for how history actually played out, these are the knives that were significant and important. And so I think it's worthwhile talking about them, showing them, representing them on the channel and bringing some uh, attention to them. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless.